Inshallah, just to uh, open the floor up, I guess, for questions as well as there's a brother who will be passing around uh, pens and paper for those who want to write the question down, Inshallah. <coughs> If you want to just raise your, raise your hands and you know, ask a question. Sonica Brothers. Um, <clears throat> you had mentioned that your father was uh, one of your best mentors. Uh, who else do you brothers, as well as the brother on the far side, who do you look uh, as a Muslim to your mentors? Um, you're right. My, my father and my mother, um, a, lot, a lot of place, our parents in our household for a reason. We didn't get to choose them. That's what I chose for us. So we definitely have to look at home first and then keep it right there in the home. I have my older brother Hamza right here, my older brother Boss right here. And I've always looked up to them and I've always wanted to be like them. I mean, you guys look at us, uh, you guys think they're young, they're in the NFL, they have uh, status or whatnot. But I mean, it doesn't take us to come talk to you in order for you to listen. You should be able to. Look at your father, look at your mother, um, look at your older siblings, sometimes your younger siblings. Look at the people around you, look at, look at the shit. Look at the people in the master, the people who go down the front row every day of life and they should pray. Those are the people that we should look up to. Those are the people that we should look up to. So I would say you don't have to go far to find a role model because they're right there in front of you. You know, Miss Saga is, is, is one of like, is a, alhamdulillah, we have a very safe community. So, um, you know, in fair places in Miss Saga, you know, gang violence and these things are not um, a big concern for us. But one thing that is a, a, a big threat um, to the Muslim, uh, you know, youth or person is entertainment, you know. And Brother George Green, he's from the music industry and music and entertainment um, and, you know, just uh, YouTube and all that is very prevalent. Um, in our society now, right? So, and music entertainment is promote, and people who are necessarily in the music industry may not have had strong um, spiritual families um, like Alhamdulillah that we do. So, and then you're listening to that content um, all the time through your friends, listening to all these rap artists, hip hop, dance music, all this stuff that's around. So, you know, you, you, you brothers, mashallah, like you're in that environment as well in, in, the, in the NFL or. George Green, um, can you explain? Can you talk about how you guys, you know, d defend yourself and, and a little bit against all that stuff? Brother asked about entertainment, and uh, you know, those are all distractions. All these things are tools uh, to distract us from the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, lot every year, you know, I used to listen to music. You know, I still listen to a little bit every now and again, but I used to listen to a lot of music. But alhamdulillah, every Ramadan, I would say, I would fast for music. And I would just start listening to lectures and listening to Quran. And I just noticed the difference. You know, not just the obvious, the obvious uh, improvement of, you know, your feeling because of Ramadan, but because of the stuff that's going inside of your ears. You know, if I hear all these different four-letter words coming into my ear, it's not going to be long before I'm saying it's because I'm right now. You know, it, I've become so immune to it. You know, I'm just going on wrapping my lyrics and not knowing that I'm cursing the whole, this, the whole time. So I would say, you know, you have to change, you know, where you're sitting, you know. So I would just definitely just change that and we can, I'm not saying you have to fat, do like me and fast for music, but I would say that definitely help. And just be, be conscious about the company you keep so that, you know, if I'm rolling with this brother and he always plays music in the car a certain type, try to get a ride from this brother. and. We're going to a place where I know there's going to be a lot of music and these different types of music, then maybe I can go somewhere else. I know if I come to the massage, they're not going to be blaring all these lyrics all around town. So it's just about some of the choices and the simple, the small ones, you know, will eventually lead to the big decisions. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Himi Syed, and I'm actually doing 30 masjids around the GTA. Uh, and today I reserved that, inshallah, wherever you would be, I would be, and alhamdulillah, uh, here we are. You're halfway in your journey. My question is, what has surprised you in the last two weeks? Both of you. Uh, brother asked, what has surprised us uh, just about halfway in our journey? 
The surprise, I think, the biggest surprise is the state of the Muslim woman. We hear about how much you know, the Muslim woman is in trouble, uh, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, I'm doing a lot of the Muslim woman is flourishing. You know, and I would say just every individual community uh, is, is flourishing. But we, we tend to look outside and see, you know, we depend on the news and the websites and everyone else to tell us about Islam and tell us how we're doing. And, you know, so I think it's up to us to bridge the gap so that uh, Toronto can talk to the community from Vancouver, Vancouver to Seattle, Seattle to Boise and things like that, and really have a strong link to unite the Muslim woman. But as far as Muslims, Alhamdulillah, we're doing very well. And I would just say to continue doing what you're doing, continue the program that we have at the Masaji, continue welcoming the youth into the Masaji, continue being dutiful to the sisters so that the sisters are able to come to the masjid, so that the sisters are able to come to the masjid and feel comfortable, so that this is a safe haven, not just for us brothers. We shouldn't have big plates of food while the sisters share one slice of pizza. It's, it's union for this, the Muslim woman, this is Islam. So I would just definitely say what surprised me and maybe I was leaving to the fact that, you know, I really started to believe maybe some of the things I heard from under the Muslim woman was going well. I have a question, I believe it's from the sister side. It says, what do you do for halal fun? And this is coming to be kind of a loaded answer. Because growing up, just like you guys, I always heard, this is haram, this is haram, this is haram. And I'm like, well, we can't do anything. And it wasn't until, I would say, a couple of years ago that I, that I realized that you have to learn your religion. We're, we were born into Islam, but you have, to, you have to learn your religion. Because when you learn your religion, then you know it's, Islam becomes very easy. Then you, then you can understand the boundaries and the different limitations. And you can know what you can and can't do. So when you don't know your religion, all you see is the stuff that you can't do. When you learn your religion, then you understand all the different things that you can do. So I mean, I mean there's a lot of fun things that I do. I'm married, I have two children. Um, my son's allowed the oldest, he's five. And I mean, what is there that we, that we can't do? I mean, am I gonna take my son to the club? No. Are we gonna go drinking alcohol? No. Are we gonna do a drug? No. So that's, I mean, that's fun that they put out there in the media, right? But then there's everything else we can do. We can go fishing, we can go play golf, basketball, football, we can sit around uh, play board game, we can do anything and everything we want. We can go ride a bike. We can do everything, but it's only a, a few things that we can't do that they do a great job of marketing to us. So then we think that's fun. So a lot of fun, there's tons of things out there just that for myself, I had to learn my religion before I can understand what I, re what I really could do. Uh, someone passed me a question. Uh, the question is, is the Illuminati real in terms of uh, the music industry? This is about my 30th time answering this question. Uh, brothers and sisters, in regards to the Illuminati, just to be clear, I don't personally even know what the Illuminati is myself to be clear. But what I can say, are there secret societies that exist that are not um, in conjunction with the law and other things like that? Yes. Um, I, I personally can't sit here and tell you which artists are part of these underground secret societies. Um, I can't get involved in naming names because for myself, I just went to do my job. Uh, I didn't get involved to find out who was worshiping what or who was worshiping who. I had a job to do, I did my job, and uh, whatever Illuminati or secret society people worship, they did on their own personal time. So I can't really give you a, uh, a concrete, uh, successful answer with that, but all I can say to you is, um, are there secret society, societies that exist that um, are not in favor of my life, I'm sure there are. But me, I have no clue. I just did my job and went home. Um, it's, a, it's a quite a bit of a long story, but I don't want to take up too much time. I'll just be brief and say that uh, I was traveling uh, traveling to the Middle East with uh, Akon, and um, I was exposed to Islam through the Middle East, and it sparked my interest. And uh, 
from there, I kind of uh, started to to learn a little bit more about it. And five years later, uh, I became a Muslim. That's the very short version of it. But um, I'll let the brother answer the other question. Just a quick announcement that there's pens and papers around if there's a student around the ledge. They can, uh, really, any questions you have, pass it forward. Uh, also, there's another question from the brothers, the little brothers. It says, where and when do you pray when Salat is over? Is it in the morning or in the evening? Uh, I pray in the morning. Uh, I pray in the evening. Uh, I pray in the evening. 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 Any of the stars that you already have in mind, Calvin Johnson, Greg, and Aaron Rodgers, Adrian Peterson, Larry Fitzgerald, on and on and on, they're all different, uh, tough to deal with. Um, as far as playing Salah Johnny, this is the toughest thing for us, especially for me, because playing in Minnesota, we have a kickoff time at 12 o'clock. So we, we typically start games right before the door, and the game ends sometimes after the door is out. So for me, I'm always playing catch. I'm always uh, making the door late. Or if I can sneak away and get five minutes here or there, I try to run in and go break and break door. Um, and during during the season when we're at practice, when we have our meetings and things, during the five minute breaks and the ten minute breaks, that's when I get a chance to to go make a lot of it. In in order for, and I know I'm in Canada now, but in order for us to be able to make a lot on the on the field or to be able to have them stop the game. We'll, we'll, do, we'll just need more muscle there. There can only be two or three or four. There will have to be a nice concentration of Muslims in order for us to be able to stop the game, be able to pray when it's time to pray. I'm going to allow we have the questions are flowing in, so I'm just offering more kind for keeping it interesting. Um, the first question is how do you keep your intentions right? Just by making dua and asking Allah, Oh Allah, produce peace, purify my heart, my mind, my body, my soul, and my mind, and my intentions. So everything I do, you know, I just say Bismillah in the name of Allah. And just try to start that way with everything. And you'll find yourself, you know, if you're saying Bismillah before everything, it's kind of hard to do something that's that's not good. Um, so definitely just making dua to Allah uh, is a great way. And inshallah, we can all benefit from it. The second one is, was it hard keeping your roots as a Muslim in the NFL? Alhamdulillah, the NFL, much like many of your jobs, is a bottom line business. You either do the job or you don't do the job. So whether you're Muslim, this, that, the other, doesn't matter. As long as we show up and we buddy and stuff like that. Young brothers, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, you know, so Alhamdulillah, you know, it's just when, when people try and go above and beyond what they believe in, or maybe where they're from, just to try and get an exception to the rule or just to try to stand out. As a Muslim, we sit back and we just say, Alhamdulillah, we go about, we do our job, and then we go home. That is the best one with God, just for the way you walk with the, the deen, inshallah. And then I got this one is, how did your parents encourage the balance between academics and sports? And what advice would you give to the youth on balancing them? The first thing, if you don't do your homework, you can't go out and play. You don't play on the computer, you don't play video games, you don't do any of that. And my mother, she was very strict. We were homeschooled up until I went to high school. And if we didn't have a 2.5 GPA, then we couldn't do anything. If we didn't have a 3.0, we couldn't do anything. So I would just say academics, then sports. That's why they call us what? Student athletes. They don't call us athlete students. They call us student athletes. Because in order to get on the field, you have to be eligible to get on the field. So you have to do your studies. So definitely, do your homework first. We would come home from school. The first thing we would do is make a lot. The second thing we would do, we would eat a snack. The third thing we would do is do our homework. And that's the, the way it goes from your academics or before your life. you guys have some questions, I really have to answer this. Please uh, hold your thought. So, I don't know if this is coming from a mother or a father, but pretty much they're saying that their son is on the computer nonstop around the clock, uh, playing games, and he's yelling and shouting at his parents. And they want to ask, how can, how can they stop him? For one, that is very rude and disrespectful to be yelling and shouting at your parents. Because more than likely, you didn't go by that computer. You 
You don't pay for electricity. You don't pay for food. All you do is eat, sleep, and complain. So there's no reason, you have absolutely no right to be doing that to your parent. And if it's your mother, you're really true. Because we all know, paradise lies at the foot of the mother. So if, if, you, if you don't want to go to paradise, you keep it up. So wherever it is out there, you, as soon as we get done, you don't have to do it right now. You need to go up to your parent. You need to apologize. Because there are people who have lost a parent. There, there's people who don't have a mother. They don't have a father. They're orphans. They want somebody to care for them. They want somebody to say, hey, you should do something with your life. Don't just sit there and play Call of Duty all day. But we want to sit there and we just want to neglect our parents. We want to act like, why are they here? Why are they bugging me? Why are they intruding on my space? What did you do to deserve that? You haven't done anything. She carried you. Your father works hard for you. Whoever this is and has this problem, you need to fix it right now. This is the month of Ramadan. So don't blame the shaitan. And hey, he's not around. This is you. This is your behavior. So you look yourself in the mirror and you fix it tonight. Thank you. I have a question that says, uh, can I get advice from boys and girls about listening to music and songs? Um, first of all, this is a very, very controversial question that uh, I don't really properly have the correct answer to because as a new Muslim, I'm still trying to uh, find the correct answer I hear from scholars saying that, some saying that this is around and other scholars saying that it's not around based on the lyrics, etc., etc. So as a professional in the music industry and, and as a new Muslim, um, I don't want to give you incorrect information because I am not a scholar, but uh, I'm in search of the correct answer myself. Let's just put it like that, because I don't have the correct answer on that. Uh, it also says, uh, basically I covered this, the next question just revolves music and, and around lyrics. And basically we all know that the lyrics are not good, but I don't want to get too deep off into that because I, when it comes to music itself, I don't really have the correct answer to that. But uh, I would say speak with your local uh, imam or, or local person in charge because he can help you better than I can. Most of you I'm learning from you as, as uh, born Muslims. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, do you think that music specifically is talking about as a powerful tool to send out messages to the uh, the brother says, do I think that um, hip-hop and rap music can be used as a successful tool um, to promote positivity, basically, all across the world? Um, of course, that the music has uh, become one of the most powerful uh, influences that we have globally. And um, uh, the messages, of course, but I can't speak for Canada, but I know in America what sells is uh, drugs, violence, and a lot of the musicians' personal experiences in the street it's, um, it's glorified. It's glorified and a lot of these brothers are expressing themselves from their, their personal experiences or, or some are just um, using it in, in a means of making money. But music is very powerful and, and depending on the message, I definitely think that it can uh, be used as a tool, to, a more positive tool to uh, promote positive things and, and help change lives uh, if used in a different way. Yes, but I'm, I want to answer this question, brother, and get right back to you, I'm sorry. The ne next thing is, how did I feel after accepting Islam, and how did I deal with the media and my family? Um, after, after accepting Islam, alhamdulillah, I felt incredibly complete, and I feel, uh, before Islam, I felt incomplete, and I felt unfulfilled. And uh, now accepting Islam, I feel very complete, I feel fulfilled, and I have a lot more peace and and uh, positive things and coming into my life, and I feel just amazing to answer your question with that. And the uh, last question is, how did you know 
you were satisfied with Islam? Is that the way to go? And is it the right decision to make? Um, there's a long story behind that, but I'll briefly just say uh, I was I had a dream, and the, and the dream helped me confirm that Islam was the correct way. And uh, after taking the shahada and being welcomed by the brothers in the masjid, hugging me and the greeting and, and giving me the salams after saying the shahada was uh, the same feeling that I had when I first went to the Middle East and was welcomed by the Muslims in the Middle East. It kind of took me back to the exact same feeling. And uh, that's how I knew that I, I felt like I had made the correct decision. And after making my first prayer, my first salat for the first time, um, I never felt that way before after uh, getting on the floor at the most humbling point of my life of, of being on the floor, my face to the floor, praying. I never felt that way before, so that was when I knew when I was convinced that I had made the right decision of uh, taking the shot and becoming a Muslim. But I'll come back to you. I have not forgot you. There was a question that someone asked, how do you pray when you are in the car and going home? Well, in a nutshell, you're supposed to, if you're praying a fard prayer, praying a prayer that's like Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, or Isha, you're always supposed to pray that uh, in a proper manner, that is standing, bowing, and prostrating. You're not allowed to just pray one of the fard compulsory prayers in your vehicle or transport. Uh, only extreme cases where like you're in an airplane and there's no place else to pray, that's when you can pray on your transport or fard prayer. Uh, that's a obligatory prayer. And the way we pray is that uh, after determining where the qibla is, if you're in a situation like that and you have to pray a fard prayer, you'll be sitting, you give your takbir, say, when you make ruku, you bow down a little bit. When you make sujood, the prostration, the prostration has to be lower than or lower down than the ruku, than the bow. And that's in general how they'll pray when they sit sitting down. But for the most part, a person should be praying their salah, if it's a fard prayer, uh, in a proper manner, not sitting down inside of the transport, if they have the option. So I can answer. I don't even know what you mean. It goes back to what I'm asking. Okay. Okay, I have quite a few. Number one, are the Abdullah brothers Somali? No, we are not. <laughs> We, I get that, we get that a lot. And me being in Minnesota, there's a, a, a lot of Somalis out there, so they always ask me that one. Um, fasting while playing football, we do fast and play football. Uh, fasting is very important to us, and just because of our profession, uh, our profession is playing football, doesn't mean we're excused from fasting. Um, if there's a bus driver or a doctor, if a student has a tough test, you're, they're still going to fast, and we felt the same way. If you want to, there's uh, actually a ton of stuff online, um, on YouTube, that, on that side, I'll be short of that one. Okay, and this one said, um, when my parents asked me to stay away from those friends, how did I react and, okay, and how, how did I react to that? Unfortunately for myself, I'm a hard-headed person. I kind of have to feel stuff to believe it. So I still, at the start of my freshman year, I still hung around with that friend. And because I used to go over there, and at first it started off as playing video games or playing basketball or uh, slap boxing, that's what we used to do. And next thing you know, I started thinking, seeing things show up. He started always inviting girls to his house when there was no parents around. He started having alcohol at his house. He started having drugs at his house. And then that's when it uh, registered in my head that this dude is not going down the right path. So as soon as my parents told me, unfortunately, I didn't, it wasn't that clear to me right then and there, but I had to see it for myself. So please, if you're advising your child to stay away from somebody and they don't do it right now, just stay on them and just continue to encourage them to, to leave that person alone. This is a great question. This is probably my favorite question that uh, people ask. So when the Vikings play play the cards, do both of you play each other? And it says, who is better being a hunter? I, I think uh, he does things better. Um, he's a bigger guy. He hits people harder. I'm a, I'm a smaller guy, so I have to be quicker on my feet and I try to intercept the ball more. But we have played, we played twice. 
Uh, both times have been uh, the Cardinals have come to Minnesota, and I am pleased to say that I beat my brother both times. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. uh, <laughs> do you own a Lambo? No. Uh, are there any other Muslim players on our team? Alhamdulillah, when I was in Denver, uh, there was a brother named Ryan Harris. Uh, look him up, Alhamdulillah, he's a Muslim brother, went to Notre Dame. I believe that Notre Dame will write before you with another day. Uh, do other players ever ask about Islam? Yes, they do. And I was actually going to talk with the Sheikh about this. Uh, but you would be surprised the people who uh, who come to you and approach you about Islam. That's why it's, it's, it's important that us as Muslims, we try to be a good example, you know, and the people, especially the people that we're around the most. And, you know, if they identify you as a Muslim, you try to put your best foot forward. You know, we, we, are, we are so far from perfect. We're not standing up here saying that we're perfect. We're just trying to do the right thing, trying to be a good Muslim. You never know who will be impressed, and inshallah, maybe you call to us. Uh, and then, is it true that you have to be a good academic to be an NFL player? That's a, to be honest with you, yes. Because there's a stat, I believe, well, there's one stat that says uh, NFL, NFL players are I mean, I don't want to say they're smarter than NBA players, but obviously they have uh, more degrees to graduate uh, because most of the NBA players leave early. But there's a statistic in football that uh, players with degrees have longer, uh, longer lives, I guess, in the NFL, or longer playing lives than players without degrees uh, in college. The people who are around, the people who are on that all academic team, they tend to be on the all conference team, you know, so they have the athletics and they have the academics. So we can't shun the academics, you know. The first verse in the Quran was Ikra, read, and we should probably be reading. Um, and then when you are fasting and play football, do you feel you can control it? Uh, I'm gonna, oh, do you, you feel thirsty, you can control it. Uh, alhamdulillah, you know, we started uh, fasting when we were seven years old. Um, our mother was really adamant about that. And alhamdulillah that she did that. So if your mom, your dad asked you to fast, then you know you should, you should try and fast because you will you will thank her in the end. And then I heard uh, today at Juma uh, about kids being in the hallways when people are praying. You know we shouldn't do that. You know alhamdulillah, let's come in here with the message, and you hear the call for prayer. You might as well come pray. Transitioned over from the former lifestyle to Islam. Uh, was it difficult, and how did you manage your old friends? Um, transitioning from my old lifestyle to Islam was it difficult? Yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, it's very challenging um, because I, I, I come from a um, very different lifestyle. Now I come to a um, very disciplined um, lifestyle, and uh, <clears throat> requires a lot more. I have to take it more seriously. Before I had no direction. I was kind of um, doing whatever my, my heart desired. So um, this new way is uh, challenging at some points, but it's very rewarding at the same time. And uh, Many of my friends are, are very miseducated about Islam. A lot of them think that they can't uh, hang around me or do certain things because I'm quote unquote religious now. But I do have some friends who are, um, they're still you know, very open-minded and Curious, and they're, they're, uh, they have seen and witnessed my changes. And um, but I, I have lost uh, quite a few friends due to ignorance because they think that they can't be themselves. Because I'll find myself hanging around people sometimes, and they'll be like, "Oh, oh, no, nah, I can't do this and do that." I say, "Brother, listen, you you can do whatever you feel. I'm I'm just not participating in whatever you're doing." But you know, people just feel that they can't be themselves because I'm Muslim now, or because I. I live a different lifestyle, but uh, I'm not here to judge what other people do. I'm just trying to uh, be the best Muslim I can be. But yes, it's all changed. Family as well. Family has got stronger or weaker? Uh, in my case, uh, my family has gotten weaker. Uh, many of, many family members do not accept Islam. I grew up in a Christian-based family, and uh, that's not to um, throw dirt on my family by no means, but. Um, 
it's just the truth. A lot of my family don't accept Islam. Uh, a lot of my family are uh, not happy about my decision and are not supporting me. But what I will say is uh, there are two people that mean the most to me and that are most important. They are very supportive and very accepting. And the rest of my family um, that are not supportive, inshallah, in time, they will soften their heart and um, open their hearts up to at least learning about Islam. But right now, many of them don't accept me as in Islam. Yeah. And uh, really quickly, someone asked me, rumor says that Akon and T-Pain are Muslim. Um, I can confirm that Akon is Muslim. He's a born Muslim. Um, as far as T-Pain, uh, I do know people in his circle, and I have heard rumors that he is a Muslim, but I can't guarantee it. I don't want to sit here and tell you something that's incorrect, but uh, inshallah I can find out and if he's taking the shahada though, but T-Pain. T-Pain, he's actually a Muslim. We've been in contact with him. Uh, his father, they're both Muslims. He's interested in actually becoming more spiritual, coming more to the deen. And actually, he uh, made an attempt about a month ago. He reached out to us asking and saying he would like to come and visit Mecca. So, make dua for him. There's a lot of people that are trying to leave that lifestyle and trying to change up or add some spirituality to their life, coming back to the deen. So, okay. I'm going to finish up with some of the, the, the questions the brothers have. And after that, then we will arrange uh, a line so that the youth and the brothers can meet the brothers and get the autograph and a picture or something like that. So, Okay, so I have this one that says, who was your favorite player and team when you were a kid? As far as football goes, my favorite player was Barry Sanders, who was a running back for the Detroit Lions. Um, I didn't have a favorite football team because there was no team in Los Angeles. Um, but I'm a big time Laker fan. Yes. <laughs> this says, were you ever criticized for being a Muslim uh, playing football? The, the great thing about football is for one, everybody talks about you regardless. It doesn't matter if you're Muslim, Christian, uh, Jewish, uh, white, black, purple, yellow, it doesn't matter. You can talk about that, that's the nature of a beast. Um, so when you play, it's all a matter of getting your job done. As long as you get your job done, nobody really cares if there's a Muslim next to them or if their captain is a Muslim or if the guy breaking the huddle or if the guy who's running down on kickoff with them is Muslim. They really don't mind as long as you do your job. So that's the beauty of football. It's the ultimate team sport, and they understand that they need you in order to be successful. So being criticized for uh, being a Muslim, I mean, maybe in high school there was a pork joke here and there, but that's probably all I have. I did get a comment that says, May Allah bless your parents. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah, I'm tired. Striving for Jannah, and inshallah we can all, you know, be a company with people who are like-minded and keep it coming, and be very well aware of the company that we keep, inshallah. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this one. Uh, what are your thoughts on swag? Um, apparently, there's a swag epidemic, um, as if the word just. Just was uh, just was uh, coined, I guess, over this last year or two. Uh, swag has been around for a very long time. I could tell you the history of swag, but I will not. Uh, but that again, what we talked about earlier, a distraction, a distraction, a distraction. So now, you know, they look at me and say, "Oh, you're not swag. You're not swag malicious or whatever term you want to use for me. Swag. Oh, he's swagging. It. We're Muslim." We don't get into things like that. We don't get into name calling. We don't get into judging anybody. And unfortunately, that's what it's become a judge. So just be careful about the company you keep, what goes in and out your ear, who comes in and out your house. Inshallah, we'll be good. But as far as swag goes, you're a Muslim. You got the most swag. Okay. Just like my dear brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, uh, it's really a great uh, it's a great opportunity for the brothers to come all this way and share their experience and their advice to the youth. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and accept from them. 
And at this time, uh, they're going to be speaking in Shara later on, uh, right before the Iftar of the gymnasium. So whoever um, is available is around, they can still attend that uh, right before Iftar, inshallah. At this time, I'd just like the brothers and sisters to, uh, to uh, make it easy for them to, first of all, for the youth and then the sisters who want to get the brothers' autographs, and then we have the youth, a line just for the youth, and then the adults. So we want to follow the older priority so that we can make sure that it's simple and, uh, and easy. Just okay, we're gonna have the sisters go first for the autographs, inshallah. So, what they're gonna do.